You're listening to Shows That Shape Me, a podcast by What's On Stage. This week's guest is actress Jemima Rupa. Jemima's career started at a young age, appearing in several films in the early 90s, as well as playing George in a TV adaptation of Ina Blyton's Famous Five. More recent screen credits include As If, Hex and Lost in Austin, and she made her Hollywood debut in A Black Dahlia alongside Scarlett Johansson. On stage, her credits range from Her Naked Skin and One Man, Two Governors at the National Theatre, and in the West End, productions of All My Sons with David Suchet and Zoe Wanmaker, and Blythe Spirit alongside Angela Lansbury. Next up, she plays Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors, which runs at Regent's Park Open Air Theatre until the 15th of September. Here is Jemima Rupa. I think the most memorable production for me so far in my very long career um, that I can remember um, would probably be Her Naked Skin at the National. Um, Because I think I was 25 or 26 and I hadn't really done much theatre. I had done a lot of TV from quite a young age and yeah, you know, there are many pigeonholes in this industry, and you know, if you were a TV actress, that's what you do, and that's what you know you're good at, and those are your qualifications. And because I didn't go to drama school, didn't have much of a chance to sort of prove myself in any other area. And I'd done kind of little plays at the court um, at Hampstead, and um, uh, didn't really get big meetings, or if I did, I probably just didn't do very well in them in the bigger theatres, and. Uh, I think I'd just done a uh, TV show for about two years playing a lesbian ghost. And what happened, I just remember the morning uh, getting a phone call from my agent saying, we're, we're sending you a script, we're biking you a script, which is so exciting, it doesn't happen anymore because obviously there's email. <laughs> um, and I biked the script for this play for the Olivier in the National. Um, the first time a, a new work by a woman to ever go on in the Olivier. And it was... Uh, and I read it and just completely fell in love with it. And the part was amazing. And I think the next day went into the audition. So it was all quite last minute. And I think they'd basically seen a lot of people for this part. And I was a sort of a go-to lesbian <laughs> actress at that time. <laughs> and um, uh, went in. Apparently, I was really odd in the audition, but it all fit. And it, it all worked, and I loved meeting Rebecca, and it was Howard Davis directing, who uh, was just the most incredible man to work with. Um, and I was very lucky enough to work with him again a few years later. Um, but the whole experience kind of, it changed my career. And uh, I then started being seen as a serious actress. Um, and I think I even, with a very, very dear friend and director, Anna Mackman, when we had a meeting about something years later, she was like, oh, because you went to RADA. I'm like, I didn't go to RADA. <laughs> so I was <laughs> very pleased that that's what people thought. I think they thought I'd just sort of graduated or something, um, which was wonderful. But um, playing in that space, being in that theatre, it was over one summer. I met uh, some of my dearest friends there, either working in the building or uh, on the stage with me. I was opposite Leslie Manville and uh, Susan Engel, and we were sort of playing three generations of women. And um, it was interesting because it was a play about women, about women's suffrage, about the women who were um, locked away in Holloway Prison, and it was a really gruelling piece. Um, I think we had a lot of ambulances outside the theatre each night uh, because there was a sort of very graphic force feeding scene, and then there was a, a, a suicide attempt, and there was a very emotional relationship breakup and all these things and at some point someone would faint or some, something would happen, um, which made it very exciting. Um, I think we sort of got through it. I found it quite terrifying when it sort of things first started happening and then uh, uh, after that it all became a bit more light-hearted and um, that's how we'd sort of get through it. Um, but it was the most incredible experience and I still think about it all the time. The most memorable production that I've seen, uh, I'm kind of going to have to cheat because there are two. Um, the first one, oh God, it's really hard. I've even got a third tucked in the <laughs> way at the back, which would make me sound much more intelligent than I am. Um, I'm going to go, first of all, with Warhorse. 
uh, which I went to see a very dear friend in who was playing the lead boy's best friend. I think he's in the second half, if I remember rightly. And, um, and he, this was again before I'd really done much theatre. And, um, and Paul Checker, this lovely actor, we'd done a TV show together for about three years, knew each other very, very well. And he, he would go and do these kind of amazing highbrow theatre jobs. And, um, and I went to watch him and I was sat really near the front and the whole experience, I just think, don't think I'd ever been moved as much in a theatre show before. I think, and I think people have this anyway with uh, animals, but it's, it's a much sort of more acute feeling that you have for them because they're such, I mean, animals and children, I think, you know, will get the waterworks going. And the puppetry was so beautiful and it was such a big, like I'd never seen a, a play on such a big scale before. Um, and it was just, yeah, I was just completely sort of swept up and blown away. And I think my boyfriend at the time, who was also an actor um, and was always, you know, very emotive in touch with his emotions, um, just kept sort of like half looking at me and going, it's a puppet. <laughs> And I was like sobbing loudly at the front. Um, but it was just sort of a harrowing watch, but it was such an incredible production. Um, I wish I was sort of able to see more of Marianne Elliott stuff, because I think she's superb. But yeah, that, that production kind of really, really sits with me. The other show that I'm gonna sneak in <laughs> is The Book of Mormon, which I saw on Broadway with the original cast and became such a fangirl of it that when it came to London, uh, I befriended slash stalked uh, Gavin Creel and um, Jared Gertner, who are now friends, well, Jared's um, a very good friend. And um, uh, I think I've seen it five times in total, uh, which I can't say about any other show. And um, uh, for me, that show was just, my, my absolute sort of like, if I could write a musical, that's what I would write. Um, it's sort of got the, per, you know, it's like sort of a Disney movie with swear words. And, um, and it's just so fun and so clever and so silly. And then all the work that goes on and all the people in it and working behind the scenes and stuff is just so beautifully, perfectly done. Um, and also it was pointed out to me that uh, I think Jared said to me, he's like, you just like it because you can't be in it. And I think that's probably true. It's much easier to like and enjoy a piece of work. Like I enjoy going to watch dancers or really good singers or whatever because I'm like, I can't do that. Um, and so possibly that's also why I like the Book of Mormon as well. And I have, I have two answers for the question that is the production that I would most like to have seen and missed. Um, one of them was, I wish my partner is the son of the late director, Mike Ockrent, and I did a version of his show, Me and My Girl, that he co-wrote with Stephen Fry um, about eight years ago in Sheffield. And I remember reading the script when it was sent to me and just finding it the most delightful, charming, and still really funny show. And I wish I could have seen the original production with Robert Lindsay and Emma Thompson, because um, I bet that was pretty special. And I've n not worked with Emma Thompson, maybe um, I'll talk about this in a bit, um, but I have worked very briefly with Robert Lindsay, who is just um, incredible and sort of fabulous. And um, and I, yeah, I, there's something kind of I think in the 80s, those, those musicals that sort of, they were, all the musicals were just sort of so big and so it was all of Cameron Mackintosh and Lloyd Webber and all of that. And I think it was a sort of very particular era for those big, shiny shows. And um, yeah, I would have liked to have watched that. And the other one, my, my cheaty one, is um, Ben Whishaw's Hamlet. Um, and just because I think he's the most exquisite actor and uh, I know him a little bit, he's an exquisite person and yeah, I wish I'd 
seen him play it because I think he's my in my head the ultimate casting of that part. The person that I would most like to work with is Emma Thompson. Uh, just I think because I've sort of grown up with her. She was one of the very few. Actually, that's, I was going to say she was one of the only sort of like female icons that I had growing up. But actually, we've had lots. Um, you know, Jennifer Saunders, Dawn French, um, uh, Julie Walters, Victoria Wood. Like, actually, growing up, I sort of took for granted in a weird way that there were these quite sort of prominent and quite brilliant, clever, clever women, funny women, bright women. Um, and I don't know, maybe you know, it's sort of different times now, but it's not quite. Doesn't feel quite the same. But there was something brilliant about Emma Thompson. I remember seeing Much Ado About Nothing in the cinema. Not really, being a bit young for Shakespeare, didn't really get it, and just being like, wow. And again, with Sense and Sensibility, which was her screenplay, and just, yeah, I think she's one very cool woman. Um, I think I'd probably be terrified of being an imbecile in front of her. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just think she's so talented. Um, I really admire her. Thank you for listening to Shows That Shaped Me, a podcast by What's On Stage. If you've enjoyed it, please don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so that you don't miss a single episode.